I'm Dr. Steve Claypool and I'm going to review the medical evidence on saturated fat. For 30 years, national dietary guidelines have recommended reducing consumption of saturated fat with a goal of reducing cardiovascular disease. Yet we now know that saturated fat is not the evil nutrient we were taught. Before getting into the evidence, I'll start with a primer on fats. Fats can be categorized as saturated and unsaturated. Unsaturated fats can further be classified as monounsaturated fatty acids, or MUFAs, and polyunsaturated fatty acids, PUFAs. And there are several types of PUFAs, the two most important being omega-3 and omega-6. A useless but interesting tidbit is that saturated fats tend to be solid at room temperature, whereas unsaturated fats tend to be liquid. And then there are trans fatty acids. When digested and absorbed into the bloodstream, all of these fats can be used by the liver to create cholesterol. Oh, and foods themselves can also have cholesterol in addition to these fatty acids. When the liver creates cholesterol from these fats, it releases the cholesterol into the bloodstream inside globules. HDL globules are responsible for removing cholesterol from artery walls and the bloodstream, so HDL is good cholesterol. For the most part, you want your HDL level to be higher. LDL globules deposit cholesterol in artery walls, contributing to atherosclerosis, so LDL is bad cholesterol. You want your LDL level to be low. Back to fats. Nerds, why do fatty acids have chemistry names? Because with saturated fats, all the bonds between carbon atoms are saturated as single bonds. There are no double bonds. Monounsaturated fats have one or mono double bond between carbon atoms. Polyunsaturated fats have multiple double bonds between carbon atoms. Omega-3s have the first double bond at the third atom, omega-6 at the sixth atom. Trans fats have double bonds, but they are in a trans configuration rather than the more typical cis configuration. The great majority of trans fats are formed artificially by a process called hydrogenation. And cholesterol has a very different structure, but who cares? Using chemistry names just adds to the confusion. I don't like teaching nutrition based on macronutrients like saturated fat. Saturated fat, MUFAs, PUFAs, I like the whole model to go kerplufa because it's confusing. People can't remember this stuff. This isn't how we eat. I'll have an order of saturated fat with a side order of PUFAs, please. No, eat real food. People should remember which foods are helpful and which are harmful by food, not by macronutrient. So let's fill in some common foods that have a lot of the various fatty acids. The biggest sources of saturated fat in the U.S. come from cheese, especially from pizza, milk, butter, ice cream, and desserts, meat products of all types, and Mexican food. And you see other common foods that are high in MUFAs, PUFAs, trans, fats, and cholesterol. Listing foods that have common fat types is a better way to approach nutrition, but it's still problematic because almost all these foods contain multiple types of fats in various quantities. For example, here's a list of common oils. Note that butter has a lot of saturated fat and cholesterol, but it also has some MUFAs and PUFAs. Olive oil and canola oil are mostly MUFAs, but they have the other fats too. Safflower is mostly PUFA, but it has MUFAs. And I'm not showing it here, but fish has a different type of PUFA, omega-3, compared with safflower oil, omega-6. And fish also has saturated fat. Bottom line, foods are more complex than this simple categorization of fats that scientists are using to study them. In fact, I think scientists have confused themselves by using this class classification system for nutrition. Nevertheless, we're forced to use the same classification system because this is how fats have been studied for decades. When I'm done, though, I'm going to bring my summary back to individual foods because that's much more helpful. I'm going to quickly go through the evidence for trans fats. Trans fats increase LDL, bad cholesterol, while lowering HDL, the good cholesterol. This is a very bad effect on cholesterol. And this meta-analysis of multiple studies showed that high consumption of trans fat was associated with an increased risk of death from any cause and increased death from coronary heart disease by about 30%. This puts trans fats near the bottom of our healthful scale of foods. But I'm not going to spend more time on this because trans fats are being removed from our diet. In 2006, the FDA required food products to list trans fats. Companies are now removing trans fats from their food products. Since that time, trans fat consumption has dropped dramatically by about 60% as of 2009 and much, much further by 2015. And the FDA has now required that all trans fats be removed from food products by 2018. Other countries are following suit, so we don't need to worry about trans fats anymore. Trans fats will not be part of our diet. So I don't even want it polluting my chart. Now I'll move on to saturated fats. 
The belief that saturated fat causes heart disease and death dates back to the 1950s. Here are two articles from 1950 and 1951. One of the reasons for believing that saturated fat caused heart disease is that foods that had a lot of saturated fat were shown to increase LDL, bad, cholesterol. And we know that the higher the serum total cholesterol and serum LDL cholesterol, the greater the probability of having a heart attack, as confirmed by this meta-analysis of 61 studies. So saturated fat raises cholesterol, and cholesterol kills, so they figured saturated fat kills. But it's not that simple. Saturated fat also increases HDL, or good cholesterol. And we now know from doing this study 61 times that the ratio of total cholesterol to HDL is even more predictive of heart attack risk than total cholesterol level. And since saturated fat increases both HDL and LDL cholesterol, the ratio of good to bad cholesterol doesn't change much with saturated fat. But they didn't realize that in the early days. Also, early observation trials noted that people that consumed a lot of saturated fat were more likely to die. Red meat was a significant source of saturated fat, and early observation studies were not detailed enough to separate meat from other sources of saturated fat. So when they noted that meat consumers died more quickly, scientists assumed that the fat in meat and other foods was the culprit. We now know that meat kills, independent of saturated fat, we believe the toxins in meat are the reason for increased deaths with meat consumption, not saturated fat. The WHO puts the level of pr uh, proof that meat causes cancer in the same category of strength of evidence as smoking. Watch my videos on red meat for more details. So it was the meat causing the deaths, not the saturated fat in the meat. And to put it in perspective, remember this study from the meat videos that suggests the increase in all-cause mortality for the overall category of red meat is about 30% for high consumers. This is enough of an effect to skew the results for the entire group of foods that have saturated fats. This places the overall category of red meat here on our healthful scale of foods. But the fact that saturated fat increased cholesterol and observation trials showed increased deaths were enough for the U.S. to declare war on saturated fat. National dietary guidelines were introduced in 1977 recommending that all fat be reduced. This low-fat diet was endorsed by professional medical societies, including the American Heart Association. So you've been taught since the 1970s that saturated fat is bad. Fast forward to the 1990s when higher quality studies of nutrition were finally being conducted. This is a randomized control trial pitting a low-fat diet against the typical American diet. It was initiated in 1993. 50,000 women were randomly assigned to one of two diets, a low-fat diet or routine American diet. This is not just an observational trial. These participants were asked to stick to a diet based on random assignment. If assigned to a low-fat diet, they were told to reduce their total fat intake. All fats were reduced, not just foods with saturated fats. In place of fats, they ate more grains, for example, pasta and bread. On average, they also ate about one more serving of fruits and vegetables. They were followed for about eight years. Which group had less cardiovascular disease? How many of you vote for the low-fat group? None, I suppose, because I already tipped you off. How many picked the normal diet? Wrong. I tricked you. The two groups were actually equal with the same incidence of cardiovascular disease. But this was a surprising finding. We had expected to see a reduction in heart disease with a reduction in total fat and, and therefore saturated fat. It's hard work to change your diet and eliminate fats and replace fat for carbs and all for nothing. Yet this was the diet we believed in in the 1990s, so results from trials like this were shocking. Note that the study group ate a little bit more fruits and veggies, which are believed to be healthful, and the control group likely had more meat, which is harmful, and yet outcomes were the same. This is a hint that the trade in fat for carbs is not a good idea. I want to point out that the results also suggest that changing from this higher carb, low fat diet to a normal diet would also have no benefit. Why didn't the low fat diet reduce cardiovascular disease? Turns out that replacing fat with carbs doesn't improve the LDL to HDL cholesterol ratio. The LDL will go down, but so will the HDL, so the ratio of bad to good cholesterol doesn't improve. We know that from the 61 trials reviewed in this study. In the 1990s, we started tracking detailed observational trials. Very detailed food and lifestyle diaries allowed us to collect data on many different risk factors so we can compare groups that are seemingly equal except for saturated fat consumption.
For example, we can compare people that are fat, don't smoke, don't exercise, eat the same numbers of fruits and vegetables, and are otherwise the same, except one group eats a lot of fat and the other doesn't. Fast forward to 2010 after we've been following these people for many years. This meta-analysis of 21 prospective studies covers about 350,000 people. There was no difference in the incidence of cardiovascular disease compared groups with a low saturated fat intake to high saturated fat intake. Jumping forward to 2015, this study analyzed multiple observational trials in a slightly different way and now looked at death, not just cardiovascular disease. Saturated fat intake was not associated with all-cause death or death from cardiovascular disease. The forest plot from this study compares different outcomes. Remember with this type of graph, each outcome is represented vertically. Bars that appear to the left of this line have a lower risk, to the right of the line a higher risk. The bar represents the confidence intervals. The range of the bar represents a 95% chance that the relative risk number is in this range. The most important finding is that saturated fat is not associated with all-cause mortality. But also note that the one bar that sticks out in this study is death from coronary heart disease. It's situated to the right and the bar barely crosses the middle line. This p-value of 0.1 means that there's a 10% chance that there is no difference between these groups. In other words, there is a 90% chance that the foods with saturated fat in these studies are actually associated with increased death from heart disease. So there is no association between saturated fat and all causes of death, no difference in cases of heart disease, but saturated fat still might be associated with death from heart disease, in which case the risk is slightly increased at an average of 15%. Basically, we need more research to resolve this issue. If the healthful food scale measured heart disease only, then we'd state that saturated fat has a 10% chance of being here in the neutral position and a 90% chance of being here. But it doesn't measure just heart disease. It is an overall assessment, and even with the uncertainty of the risk of heart disease, we're much more confident the overall risk of all-cause mortality is neutral. As I stated, there is inherent uncertainty in attempting to study a macronutrient. Lumping foods together when studying fat causes problems. Meat increases the risk of death from toxins, so including it in the fat analysis complicates the assessment. Instead, investigators should have studied individual foods relative to their fat content. If that was done, I suspect the inclusion of meat might be responsible for the presumed risk of heart disease. And it turns out that there is this study that has helped point out that we shouldn't attempt to study nutrients in isolation. This is a meta-analysis of 26 studies that was able to assess the risk of disease in foods with a lot of saturated fat by comparing specific foods. Milk, cheese, butter, and yogurt were not associated with all-cause death or death from heart disease. Whereas meats and processed meats were strongly associated with both all-cause mortality and death from heart disease. Duh. We already knew the toxins from meats cause death. It's probably not the fat content in the meats that is the culprit. Back to the food scale. I need to consolidate some of the foods to make room. And I'm going to list the specific foods instead of saturated fat because listing macronutrients makes no sense. There is a little more information to consider for dairy products that I'll review in the future in specific videos, for example diabetes, but for now these foods are neutral. And it doesn't matter if we're talking about whole milk dairy products or skim versions and palm and coconut oil, which are very high in saturated fat, go here too. But I'm not including them because they're not eaten commonly enough to warrant a spot on my chart. What about eggs? They don't have much fat, but they have a lot of cholesterol. One meta-analysis suggested a modest risk for cardiovascular disease. Another meta-analysis suggested no risk, and a third more recent study suggested that accurate analysis of the data isn't yet possible because of a variety of reasons. Basically, we need more research. As of now, eggs are either neutral or possibly slightly unhealthful. Time and more studies will give us the final answer. They certainly aren't the evil food they were once portrayed to be. Although there is still some uncertainty if saturated fats might carry a small risk for heart disease, there is agreement among scientists that saturated fats are overall a neutral food health-wise. So what are government and professional societies stating? England's public health organization came out with a statement that it still supports guidelines that recommend limiting saturated fat. The remainder of countries have not changed guidelines, including the USDA and American Heart Association. The USDA still recommends limiting saturated fat. In addition to lobbying pressure, one reason for not revising the guidelines is because scientists aren't sure of the impact of changing the message. If saturated fats are replaced with unhealthy choices, outcomes will be worse. On the other hand, if they're replaced with healthy choices, outcomes will be better.
and vice versa. Eating more saturated fats instead of unhealthy foods would be good, but replacing healthy foods for saturated fat would be bad. Scientists don't know what substitution pattern will happen with guideline changes. Let's look at the data and decide which substitutions make the most sense. There are 15 good randomized control trials that are included in this review. In these trials, participants were assigned to eat either a diet with saturated fat or a diet where the saturated fat was replaced with other macronutrients. Cardiovascular disease was reduced when saturated fat was replaced with non-saturated fat, especially PUFAs. Cardiovascular disease was not reduced if saturated fat was replaced by carbohydrates or protein. And we have this study of 11 prospective cohort trials. Instead of being assigned a diet, these participants had their natural diets identified and those that ate saturated fats were compared with other groups and followed over years. Other foods and lifestyle factors were controlled for. People that consumed PUFAs instead of saturated fat had less cardiovascular disease, whereas those that consumed simple carbohydrates rather than saturated fat had slightly more cardiovascular disease. Neither of these two studies had much data on MUFAs. In the PUFA group, omega-3 PUFAs are associated with better outcomes than omega-6 PUFAs, that is, fish and nuts, instead of safflower oil. And although there isn't as much data on MUFAs as a group, there is a lot of data on olive oil. This is, again, the reason macronutrient organization is confusing and dumb. So let me spell it out with specific recommendations. The commonly consumed foods with saturated fats, milk, cheese, butter, cream, are neither bad nor good for you. Eggs are also fairly neutral. There is no reason to limit your consumption of these foods. Meats are bad for you, as previously reviewed, but probably not because of the saturated fat. So it would obviously make no sense to substitute a meal of butter, cream, and greasy cheese with lean beef. That would be dumb. Do not eat a low-fat diet and substitute the saturated fats with simple carbohydrates, like pasta, bread, rice, and sugar. If you are going to limit your butter, cream, and cheese, then replace them with fish, olive oil and nuts. This makes sense regardless of official statements about saturated fat.